Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I created this background music using mostly these bells over here. I've got a set of bells. They're all tuned and I'm going to show you exactly, welcome back, uh, exactly how I made this music. So we're going to come back to this in a few minutes. First, I want to welcome you back to World Drum Club. I'm Kalani, your host and teacher here. So the theme of this video is melodic percussion, and I want to show you one way you can not only use things like bells that you can buy just about anywhere, or that you can inherit uh, from your father, uh, that used to be his school bell, uh, but you can use these instruments along with other uh, tuned instruments if you do a couple things. And one of them is check the pitch. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And, my friends, I actually found a way that you can tune the bells if it's not exactly uh, on the pitch that you need. So that's very exciting. And I'm going to show you one way that I discovered how to do that using borrowing some technology from a uh, tank drum that I have. So really excited about this video. Uh, by the way, you heard in the video a few instruments. One of them was this, uh, these little ankle pods, which I'm very fond of. You heard the Native American style flute, and you heard these bells. Let's get down to the bells over here, and I want to show you what we have. So we have a set of Pete Engelhart uh, Ago Go bells. That's this set of three, and I'll, t I'll show you those in a second. We have a Gankogui. And this is a, you know, West African drum, uh, drum, uh, West African style bells, Ewe, Gahu drumming, double bell. And then we have, as I mentioned earlier, this school bell. This is actually the actual bell that was from my father's elementary school where he grew up in upstate New York. And this just happens to be tuned. So let's go over how the bells are tuned, what they're tuned to, and how I was playing them. All right. So let's start with the uh, Engelhart bells. So, uh, this is a set of three, obviously, and they sound like this. I'm just going to use a soft mallet because it's more melodic. So, I wrote the pitches on here, and the, I don't know if you can see that, but I wrote. It's B flat here, F, and E flat over here. So, how did I find that? Well, what you're going to do for that is use a tuner. So I have a tuning app like this one. I'll put it here so you can see. And uh, let's get rid of that. So the tuning app, and I know this is not, you may not be able to see it super clear in the camera, but basically, let me see if I can focus on it. Sorry about the, uh, the background lettering, but that's what happens with the camera. So that'll go away in a second. Um, but down here, when I play the bells, of course, uh, it registers the pitch. So in case you can't see it, that one is a slightly sharp B flat. It's about almost 20 cents sharp. And then the F, well, let's go to the E flat. Same thing, a little bit sharp E flat. And then the F is, according to this, is a little flat. So that's pretty cool. It's close enough, close enough for jazz. Uh, the school bell. Actually, it's really hard for my tuner to hear it, but I'm calling that an F. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's, it's kind of a sharp F. So it matches that. And then the Gankogui, uh, I'm just using the low bell which matches the B flat, pretty much. And then the, uh, the upper bell I'm not using, actually, that's a, that's a kind of sharp F, so I could use that, but I didn't in the recording. So, uh, so what, do, um, what do we learn? We learn that we can play uh, the bells together and they will give us a you know, melodic background. Here they are.
and I just played these. I played them to a click, uh, and then I added the uh, shaker. And then I played a little bit of the G minor flute. So pretty cool. Uh, now, I want to get into the question of tuning because I know you're probably wondering how could I tune a similar instrument if you have if you have one. So you have a bell that's kind of close, and it could be a cowbell, agogo, um, you know, gankogui, any any metal object. Uh, and I will say that it's easier if it's smooth and flat like this one. It's pretty pretty smooth finish. What and we're gonna I'm gonna show you right now uh, the, what I found out. So what I did is I I stole a magnet. I used this tiny magnet. It's very tiny. It's really hard to see, but it's right there. I took this little magnet, little round magnet, it's about, I don't know, half a centimeter, and um, you can place it on the inside or the outside of the bell, and it will add some weight to the material, and that will slow it down, and that will drop the pitch, right? Because pitch is just a uh, speed, it's frequency, and uh, slower pitches go are flatter, and higher pitches are sharper. So, it, let's go back to the overhead, I want to show this to you. I hope you can see that. So, I'm gonna play that. Now that's a sharp B flat, right? We said it's about about 20 cents sharp. Right here, maybe 18. Now look what happens when I place the magnet on the bell. So now it's actually flat. And the cool thing is, so I placed it near the mouth, the cool thing is, if I move it up, moved it up about an inch towards the top of the bell, now it's just a tiny bit sharp, so if I can, I can move this down a little. Look at that, you guys. It's almost exact. Now it's pretty much right on the money. So, I, of course, I probably would, if I wanted to have a permanent or semi-permanent fix, I'd stick it on the inside. And uh, now it's in there, right? Where is it? There. So I have this magnet on the inside, and it's not buzzing. If it does, you could move it, but it pretty much didn't, didn't buzz much. Look at that. Right on the money. So I think that's super exciting, you guys. Uh, you know, you can try this magnet technique on any of the instruments you have, even wooden instruments. Well, you can't try it on wood unless you have metal on the other side. Maybe two magnets, you know, across from each other or something like that. Um, I want to give a shout out to Beetroot because, let me show you, hang on. Um, the beetroot uh, tank drum because I stole the magnets from the inside. <laughs> and this is one of their tuning magnets, and you can see uh, in the in the beetroot instrument that it's got these you know tuning magnets in there. So I'm going to put it back in its home now. Uh, but I encourage you guys to check also check out my video on the beetroot instrument. And you see, there's like three little slots in there. So let me put this back into its home. There we go. It's back in there. And you see, you can use these to, to tune. What is that guy doing? He's out, out of place. Oh, no. He's in place. Oh, let's get him back. Uh, you can use the magnets to tune this instrument. And uh, while we're not, this isn't the focus of the video, but great sounding tank drum. Uh, anyway, watch my video on the beetroot um, tank drum for more on that but uh, I want to I want to thank them for letting me uh, steal one of the magnets off and so I could show you this video so let's get back to the music I'm gonna play the flute a little more on the outro but this is a way that you can use some of the percussion instruments that you have and what you need to do is go through your metal sounds 
and just get a tuner any you know doesn't, doesn't have to be an app it could be a regular tuner and check all of your metal instruments including cymbals and gongs and everything and maybe just somewhere you know discreetly write the uh the the pitch on there and you might even write it like a b flat plus 17 or something just so you know that it's a little sharp or minus if it's flat okay that's pretty much it um Thanks for tuning in. As always, go over to patreon.com and uh, support us over there and join us over there for more. I'm going to play us out right now with a little Native American style flute. Uh, this, by the way, is a G minor flute. Why is that? It's because the notes that I found on these bells are B flat, E flat, and F. It kind of outlines a B flat major scale, right? That's the one, the four, and the five. B flat major. The G minor flute is the relative minor, so B flat is the relative major, so I'm using the G minor flute. It gives me that B flat major scale. That's, that's basically why I'm using it. All right, here we go. We're going to get these bells rocking again, and thanks for tuning in. Leave your kind and helpful comments below. Connect with us at patreon.com slash Kalani. Also, the World Drum Club Facebook group. Find us over there, and uh, enjoy playing with tuned percussion. I'll see you guys in a future video.